This is from a recent Try Thinking video. They were discussing what Bev called a geometric statement. Now, I won't be playing the whole thing, but there is a timestamp link in the description. Well, not to get to that, but to put um, an image in people's minds or somebody to give me an image of what does one degree for every 69 miles, what does that, what image does that mentally conjure up? Because it's, it's geometric. It's a geometric statement. Hmm. Celestial navigation by chance? But who's actually done this? I know I don't. I don't measure angles to the lights in the sky at all, ever. Bev, you should know that this was used by navigators for hundreds of years before the advent of GPS. Right, so you've got A and B. And there's an angle measured at A and an angle measured at B. And then you've got a distance between these two points. Because to me, this is, is that's about as simple as you can get this. 69 miles, one degree change of the, me the angle measured at each end of the horizontal. Here's a good way of trying not to understand how this works. For starters, Bev forgot one important thing. The celestial object that both these angles point to. Now, since Bev is basing this on an Earth's surface that is horizontal, that means that the zenith to the celestial object forms a 90 degree angle at the GP. And look at that. Now we have two right triangles. You could go again, couldn't you? It's a linear. It's a linear. You could just go for woo, another 69 miles. What happens? One degree change again. And off you go again. Another 69 miles. Boom. One degree. Yes, this is a linear relationship because when we graph this, we get a straight line. And then what the clever trick is to say, well, 60 nautical miles. So what's that? Well, that's because then you can just divide it by uh, <laughs> one, uh, divide it by 60 and say minutes. One minute is equal to one nautical mile. Well, a nautical mile is just reference to an angle. That's ridiculous. Actually, you could use any measuring system that you wanted to. It's just that 60 nautical miles per degree simplifies the math. So how could Bev have made a better geometric model of this? But I just picture like if I was starting and nobody ever does this starting under Polaris, you know, establishing that, that angle right there and then walk or, or traveling 69 miles in any direction. So I would have that vertical, you know, at my starting point, what I would consider a starting point, the ground position of Polaris, and then start to move away. That's what I picture in my head. Now that is a good idea. Start at Polaris and move away. Okay, tell me where I'm wrong, Ben. It's just an angle. What? It's just an angle? And he continues with this a little bit later. You can do fuck all with an angle. So uh, the reason I've never been into this um, further point is because in order for you to get me into that next part, I have to know what the fuck I'm doing with an angle. And this is the problem. So Bev, instead of saying I can do fuck all with an angle, you should be asking what the fuck can I do with an angle? I mean, I thought your channel was all about realizing Euclid and learning about geometry. Saying it's just an angle is ridiculous. First of all, you should have understood that since you're basing this on a horizontal, that means that these angles form right triangles with the zenith line to the celestial object. And you also should have known that you could use trigonometry to model this on your horizontal. Now this is something you could have easily drawn on your whiteboard and will use 10 degrees equals 600 nautical miles. So your horizontal is a scale ruler, and that includes every 10 degrees of north latitudes from the North Pole down to the equator. Next, you add the appropriate distances starting at zero nautical miles at the North Pole. And of course, we add Polaris at zenith above the North Pole. Well, obviously, Polaris would have an altitude above the North Pole, and the easiest way to find this would be use 45 degrees north latitude. And that's because the observed angle to Polaris from that latitude is 45 degrees. Now, since this is a right triangle, we know that the line of sight to Polaris forms a 45 degree angle with the zenith line. And since this forms an isosceles triangle, 
We know that the sides opposite of these 45 degree angles are of the same length. And look at that. We used an angle to find the altitude of Polaris above the horizontal. Now let's draw the observed angles to Polaris from each of these latitudes. Now the question is, are the distances and angles of these triangles correct? And this is where we can use trigonometry. So let's see if every 10 degree change does equal 600 nautical miles on a horizontal. And all we need to do is use this trigonometric equation to check these latitude distances. So we will divide 2,700 nautical miles by the tangent of the observed angle. And let's start with 80 degrees latitude north. Now the distance is 600 nautical miles, but when we do the calculation, we only get 476 nautical miles, or 124 miles short. Well, maybe every 10 degree change is actually 476 nautical miles on a horizontal. And if this is the case, 20 degrees should equal 952 nautical miles, not 1,200 nautical miles. Well, that's definitely not the case. And by subtracting 476 from 983, we can see that this 10 degree change actually was a bit longer at 507 nautical miles. Now again, we do not have a match for 60 degrees, but again, we do have a 10 degree segment that increases from 507 to 621 nautical miles. Now there's a pattern developing here because every 10 degree segment increases in size as you move away from the GP. And Bev, you would know this pattern if you understood how trigonometry works. So here are the distance from the GP calculations for the rest of these latitudes. And the last one is only at one degree, so that is a nine degree segment. These are the distances for each segment. And as you can clearly see, these segments continue to increase in size as you move farther away from the GP. Now you can change the altitude of Polaris to whatever you want, but it's not gonna change the fact that this is not a linear relationship. And if you're gonna use the excuse that those aren't measurements, but only calculations, then pull out a protractor and measure those angles. As you can see here, 80 degrees lines up, as to 70 degrees, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and even one degree. So again, each 10 degree segment increases in size as you move farther away from the GP on a horizontal. So the question is, Bev, why don't you know this geometry? But to be honest, I didn't even need to go through all those calculations because if Bev knew what to do with an angle, he would understand that this observation was not possible. Unless he thinks that Polaris physically sits on the Earth's surface when viewed from the equator. So does every 10 degree change equal 600 nautical miles on a horizontal? Absolutely not. So Bev, if you think I am wrong, then instead of talking about geometry and quoting Euclid, why don't you actually use geometry to show us exactly how 600 nautical miles for every 10 degree change in Polaris works with your horizontal? So in part two, I'm gonna see if panelist paper organist had a logical explanation for Polaris. Also, is there a better geometric model for one degree equals 60 nautical miles? And of course, I'll show a few more things that we can do with a fucking angle.